The process of making everything from scratch can be messy. And as you have seen, I can make huge messes. Though, while occasionally I get rinsed off, to really get clean sometimes requires a little help. So, starting from some rocks, some lake water, and a variety of plants and animals, let's take a closer look and make my own soap from scratch. But first, this video is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. As a guy who doesn't know much about grooming, knowing the right products to buy can be a hassle. Thanks to Dollar Shave Club, I don't have to worry about that. New members get their first month of their daily essential starter set, including the executive razor and trial size version of their shave butter, body cleanser, and one white Charlie's butt wipes for only $5 and free shipping. After that, razors are just a few bucks a month. This offer is exclusively available at dollarshaveclub.com slash HTME. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash HTME. Join the club today. Soap is a grandiose story of its origin. Coming from the holy mountain near Rome, of Mount Sopa, where animals were frequently sacrificed and burned as an offering to the gods. The mixture of the animals' fats, ashes from the fires would intermix and flow into the mountain streams. Further down, people washing their clothes in the stream noticed this strange combination was very effective at cleaning. And the rest is history. Except it's not, and that's a complete myth. There's not even a Mount Sopa. It's not where the word soap comes from. In fact, the Latin word sopa is borrowed from a German word for animal fat. The actual history of soap is likely somewhat similar, but first occurred at least 2,000 years before Rome was even founded. And a little further east, in ancient Sumer, their soap was similarly made by combining animal fats and ashes. Historically, however, soap's primary purpose was most often for preparing wool for dyeing. Its use for personal hygiene was relatively rare and usually restricted only to the wealthy or by priests in religious ceremonies. In fact, the Romans themselves often preferred a method of cleaning the body with oils, a brace of sand, and a device called a strigil. In the end, it wasn't until after the Industrial Revolution when soap could be more cheaply mass-produced and everyday use of soap became commonplace. Before I make my own soaps, Chris decided to try out making a version of that original ancient soap himself using wood fire ash. While I was still busy stuck in the Stone Age, working on our next upcoming video. Okay, so here's the deal. I have already made like four fires this week just to get enough ash to uh, try to do this bacon ash experiment. My neighbors are complaining about the smell. I, you know, just smell like forest fire all the time. Anyway, enjoy your footage of water boiling. It's so basque. I'm going to use the last of a Valentine's Day gift that I gave to my girlfriend this year. A little bear. Kind of feels like soap. Don't know if it'll lather or if it'll just make you dirtier than clean. And I'll set that aside for a few days. But how does soap actually work? You've heard the term that oil and water don't mix? Well, they do when soap is used. That's because one end of the soap molecule is hydrophilic or water loving, and the other is hydrophobic, water hating, which makes it a perfect middleman between these two chemicals. These molecules in the soap bind with the dirt and grease, allowing the grime saturated molecules to wash off. Soap does a great job of getting rid of grease, and that has to do with the fact that it's derived from fat itself. Soap is made when the fatty acids from animal fat or plant based oils mix with an alkaline solution, forming a fatty acid salt. In this process, called saponification, the alkaline reacts with the fatty acids and they neutralize each other. The resulting chemicals are soap and glycerin. Now, to make my own soap. The first step will be making an alkaline solution to react with the fatty acids. Fortunately, the same chemical compounds I've spent a large amount of time and effort collecting in the past for glass making can actually also be used in making soap. I extracted potash before by burning hardwood and collecting the ashes. Then I soak them in water, strained, and boil the solution down to just the remaining potassium carbonate. 
The alternative compound I also sourced for glass making, sodium carbonate or soda ash, I found in a mineral rich lake in Wyoming. I stopped in Utah before going home and got the help of Cody of Cody's lab in removing the other contaminants in the lake water so I could have a mostly pure soda ash left over. Both of these compounds are alkaline, but there exist even stronger bases that can be made from them, sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide, also known as lye and caustic potash. To produce that, I'll need another compound I also collected previously for making glass, limestone. First, with a quick warning, make sure you wear proper skin protection when working with caustic compounds such as quicklime and lye. Not wearing them can easily result in chemical burns, which I got plenty of in the process of this video. I have limestone I collected here before my first attempt at making glass. At least I think it's limestone. I just went to an area that supposedly has limestone and grabbed some rocks and ground them up. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually test it to make sure this is limestone, because if it isn't, it's gonna explain why my first attempt at glass was so bad. It's a pretty basic process. You just take an acid like hydrochloric acid and just drop a few drops onto the rock. And if it fizzles, you have calcium carbonate. Couple of drops on Twitch. Ooh, we have limestone. I don't know the full concentration, but after I kiln it, it should become water soluble. Well, the impurities should not, I think. You can tell the color is kind of brown, which probably means there's a decent amount of impurity. So I'll put in the kiln at about 1000 degrees Celsius and carbon dioxide will be driven from the calcium carbonate, turn it into calcium oxide. Got our little kiln we got before and our attempt to making the ultramarine. If it fits. Ooh. Oh, it broke it. <laughs> so this should hopefully be the uh, calcium oxide now with the other impurities, which look like I've made it darker. Gonna add it to water now. Calcium oxide should dissolve into the water, turning to calcium hydroxide. So just let that sit for a little bit and then I'll strain it. That turned out pretty good. So that should be quick lime or slack lime. Now that I have quick lime, Converting the soda ash and potash is simply a matter of mixing them each with quicklime and removing the precipitate. Then just need a quick pH test to confirm that I've made some new alkaline bases. For all my previous attempts, I now have five different bases that I can potentially use for making soap. I have potash, soda ash, lime water, caustic potash, and lye. So now with these five different bases, I should be able to make five different types of soap. So to test that, I have store-bought olive oil. Everything's already pre-measured. I'm just gonna mix them together, blend them up, just to compare how they're all different. So I'm gonna start first with the potash and soda ash. And these were kind of the first compounds that were used to make soap. They're the weakest bases. And as soon as people figured out how to make these stronger, lye-based ones, they use those for soap making. Start with the potash. So there's two methods of making soap, the cold method and the hot method. And uh, the difference between them is one you do when it's cold and the other you do when it's hot. And like all chemical processes, the hotter it gets, the quicker the reaction is. And that's basically the whole difference. So I'm going to do these quicker. So I'm going to heat them up and then agitate them and mix them up. This is going to be like a lukewarm method. I only got a hot plate big enough for one. Story of my life. Lie. Ooh. Don't breathe that. Thing about making soap, it's self-cleaning. I'll throw them in a crock pot, let them sit for an hour or so, finish baking, and then pour, let them sit for a couple days. Soap. All right, so I have the samples here now after a few weeks. Pretty much only the lye one has actually gotten hard. And even then, it's still pretty soft. The caustic potash is relatively soft. It's usually used for soft soaps. You can see why. The outside is dried out, so a few more weeks, it might actually be solid eventually. This is the non-soluble one, which is all liquid. We've got uh, soda ash, which actually has hardened up a little bit. It might just be crystals of excess though. And then the potash. Probably would make a decent liquid soap, but I'm after hard soap, so I think I'm gonna use the lye for my other batches. Now that I figured out what base I wanna use, next, I'll just need a fatty acid for it to react with. Pretty much anything with fat in it can be used. 
And so far, through all my other projects, I actually have a wide variety of options, including some of the pig lard we also got from the pig I used for my football from scratch. To collect just the fat, it just needs to be rendered and strained. Other items I've previously sourced that contain fats include both cow milk and goat's milk, beeswax, plus a variety of different plant seeds that all can be pressed in an oil press to extract their oils. So I have all of my different fats and oils here. I have a dozen of them, and each of them should make a different type of soap. Each one contains a different combination of a variety of fatty acids, and they each have kind of have their own characteristics and will yield a different result for each one. I'm gonna just experiment with each individual fat and make my own bar soap and see which ones will work best. Some might form rock hard bars, some might not lather, some might lather too well, some might not do a good job cleaning. It would be possible just to look it up and find hundreds of different recipes of recommended balances, but uh, I'm gonna do it the hard way, just experiment and turn all my different fats into their own unique soap. Make some soaps. Now it's just a matter of mixing carefully measured quantities of the lye solution with each fat. If I did my math correctly, each one should have just enough lye to react with the fats. Otherwise, the leftover lye could remain in the soap and cause skin irritation. Since I'm doing the cold method for this, it's gonna take a lot of mixing. Now for the milks, there's a risk that the exothermic reaction might cook the milk. So oftentimes it's done in an ice water bath, keep it chilled. <laughs> yeah. well, the other ones did that. Support us on Patreon so we can keep stuff up. So I'm gonna have a little bit of extra soap in each of my mixes. So I'm just gonna put it into one big beaker and combine them all. And then I'll have a little bit of a all-inclusive bar. Let's see how that one turns out. My 12 different soaps made from 12 different fats, and as I expected, very wide variety of consistency between them. Should be interesting to see how they turn out after a few weeks. In the meantime, I have a huge mess to clean up. Oh boy. Okay, let's get cleared up in here a bit. Now a few weeks later, took my first batch of soaps out for a test wash to see how well they work and compare. But as far as I could tell, they all seem to work fairly well. However, a few I quickly realized had leftover lye in them and gave me some pleasant chemical burns. Oh, that stinks, oh, oh. So I tested them all for their pH and eliminated a few bars when my chemistry didn't quite work out right. My combined soap of all of them combined was also too caustic, so I remelted it and added some more oil to try and balance the reaction out. Also, the combined smell of 12 different fats didn't really turn out the greatest, so I thought I'd try adding some lavender from what I grew and dried this summer in my garden. Lastly, I thought I'd try to make a little bit more of a creative mold for it this time and made my own using some carved styrofoam and a silicon mold kit. Now just to pour it out, let it dry. So at this point, I now have 20 different soaps we've made. I have the five different tests I did with the base. Each of them formed some kind of soap. Then I have the 12 different oils I used and made 12 unique soaps. A few of them I got the chemistry wrong and uh, they're a little bit caustic. And if you have any cuts in your hands, they're going to burn. And then I took the leftover soaps, the kind of the Frankenstein of all of them. It's the first time making my own mold 
and it kind of shifted and got weird on me. So I'm not too confident about it, but I'll take it out in a second and see how it did. And then I have, lastly, the soap that Chris made using the very primitive method, which was probably about how they did it way back when it was first discovered. Let's flip this guy over, see if it comes out in one piece or not. Yeah, it didn't work. That's a fail. I think I made a decent bar of soap though. It just uh, did not hold the shape. It does smell somewhat lavendery. It wasn't very strong. I tried testing all of the soaps by washing the dirtiest thing I could find. Leftover pig hide from my football. This pig is gonna be so clean. However, once again, I had a hard time assessing and comparing them. So, I enlisted a little help. Thanks, Andy. This thing is terrifying. Oh, it is already all over my hands. <laughs> no! I take back my gross noises. I would play with this. It washes off very easily. I just feel like I'm playing with mud from a pond. My hands feel relatively clean. There's still a faint smell of bacon grease on my hands and I don't like that. Actually, it does smell a little bit better. But actually, I think it helped. Water is quite gross. I don't know if that's from the pig or the soap. Probably the soap. The sink looks like somebody took a poo in it. Oh, it's so slimy. We have a little suds on this one. This one looks like it's trying to sud, but like it just ends up slimy instead. You could probably slow this at like wash or something. Be like, ooh, DIY like slime soap. <laughs> this one's worse. This one's slimy too. This is like way thicker than soap is supposed to be. Castor oil, ricin. This one's starting to bubble a little bit. I feel like I just played with a slug. But it's not as sudsy as soap should be. There's absolutely no suds with this one. <gasps> Ooh, this one's good. It's still kind of like slimy and oily. But at least I got some suds this time. Look at those suds. Uh, didn't know soybeans were so sudsy. This one's really starting to get bubbly and it doesn't feel gross on my hands either. Still kind of slimy. We're back to a slimy feeling in the soap. I'm nibble a little piece off. <laughs> is this the chocolate one? I feel like I'm eating soap. This one feels not gross, but it's not lathering. I just felt like I was cleaning with like a rock or something. <laughs> this one is getting sudsy. Also doesn't feel as gross, but it still doesn't have that soap feel yet. Pretty much no slime on it. It doesn't smell, which is surprising. Everybody said it was gonna smell bad. But it's actually pretty neutral. Not a lot of suds. Not a lot of residue coming off the soap. The soap's very hard. Actually a lot better than I thought it would be. That was gonna be a hunk of wax. This is not Burt's Bees. HTME, very clearly, it says HTME. HTME, molded gray. It smells kinda earthy. Feels weird though. It's got that gooey thing going on, but it's sudsing really good. This one wasn't unlike the other soaps. Probably cause it is all the other soaps mixed together. We made 20 different types of soap here, and uh, most of them were pretty successful, I'd say. I think it was the soybean has been the best so far, the most convincing. If I bought it at a store, I wouldn't return it. I'd be like, hey, this is soap and it's cleaning my hands. I'd say my favorite soap so far is still the peanut and low key, I kind of like the big melted Frankenstein one because it smells the best. Wasn't necessarily the best result, but I have successfully made 20 soaps that are at least somewhat effective. It's just the beginning of a whole series we're doing on toiletries. We're gonna be doing a bunch of other cleaning products, toothpaste, toothbrush, shaving cream, and a razor, and a bunch of other things, just so you can get clean. For that pig, I do not feel that clean though. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.